Hello, my awesome and amazing Scorpios. It's Mel with Blue Scorpion Tarot. Here to bring you another general collective love reading. Let's see what's going on in the overall current energies right now. Calling upon the trusted ancestors on my Scorpio viewers and my Scorpio subscribers to bring in the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth through the power of the numbers. And so it is. And of course, rolling the dice to see what I need to shuffle a deck to. Power of number seven. Some of you guys could be dealing with a Cancerian or a Leo born in the month of July. Could see the chariot card kick in. Something about forward movement and or moving on from a situation. Um, it could physically be a move. You could be moving out of state. You could be thinking on like moving on from an, a job situation. Um, however, since we're on the subject of romance... Um, Either look like moving forward and not looking back because I'm also seeing like the fool card in my mind's eye right now, taking a leap of faith towards your destiny right now, or this could be a new love connection that is on the horizon for you or somebody that you might have currently just recently met. Power of number six, we could see the lover's card. Some of you are dealing with a Gemini or a Cancerian born in the month of June. Also picking up on the Six of Cups, blast from the past energy. Somebody's been heavily thinking about you or you're thinking about the past or somebody's reminiscing about past moments in time. The connection. Power of number eight, we could see the Strength card. Could be dealing with a Leo or a Virgo born in the month of August. Picking up on the Eight of Swords, somebody's hands are tied right now, trying to figure something out. But I'm also seeing the Two of Wands, something about making plans or somebody is at a distance. You could be in a, a long distance relationship situation right now. Making plans for the future, making plans for your romantic life. We are in the waxing moon phase. Things are on the grow. This is the time to be manifesting for the good things in your romantic life to be coming forward. But adding up the power of the numbers brings me to the number 21, which is the world card. Some of these Scorpios could be dealing with another fixed sign, an Aquarius, a Taurus, a Leo, or another Scorpio such as yourself. This could be uh, endings to old karmic patterns or cycles so that a new phase, a fresh new start, brand new beginning can happen. So power of number 21. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could have been born in 1971, 1972, 1976, or 1978. Possibly 1961, 1962, 1967, or 1968. Or 1981, 1982. 1986 or possibly 1987. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Trusted ancestors and my Scorpio viewers and my Scorpio subscribers, what is the overall general collective love message, please? What does Scorpio need to know right now? Ooh, baby, you've got some Leo energy coming in. Yeah, some of you Scorpios could be dealing with the Leo. Um, the Sun card, listen. Sun card is by far the most powerful, most positive card in all of the tarot deck. This is more than like wishes being fulfilled. This is like, to me, it's like fate and destiny with that energy of like the wheel of fortune. It's almost like an unexpected turn of events. So it feels to me between now and the summertime process of 2023, Provided that you're staying exceptionally positive about your romantic life, where you're headed, getting that confidence boosted up, getting your courage or strength amplified, okay? Looking good, feeling good, you know, 
having your energy levels up. Some of you guys need to get back to the gym. Your energies could be very sluggish right now. You know, having good, high energy, high vibrational energy will also help attract that romantic partner. It's just one element that you may want to consider. Okay. Um, however, marriage proposals, somebody could be saying, I love you. Uh, this could be about engagements, marriage, better, happier family dynamics and or situations. Some of you could technically be pregnant right now, getting ready to have birth over the next few months or into the summertime process. You could be due, I'm picking up, some of you might be due in the month of July if you're pregnant for some of you, okay? Um, this could be about combining families together. What is the sun card in regards to Scorpio's romantic life? Yeah, it's like you're, okay, being confident. You could be single right now, okay? Even if you have a specific person on your mind, but it's almost like you're standing solid as a rock right now, okay? And working in on your personal career, your finances, and th there's like a new level of excitement. This is what I'm picking up on. A level of excitement within your romantic life, okay? Something revitalizing or feeling, it almost feels like a sigh of relief, Scorpio, that the right person, the right soulmate for you, it's, it's like you guys are going to be PB and J with the crest cut off. Okay, so let's go into, let's go into, um, my thoughts first went to the Hidden Truth Oracle, so there's obviously got to be a reason for that. Okay, right now, somebody is burying themselves in work to forget about you or you yourself, Scorpio. Right now, you could be using work as a distraction <clears throat> from your romantic life. I don't feel all of you necessarily have entirely given up on your romantic life. I think it's, you know, there are days that you guys go through where, you know, You know you want it, and you know you can have it. And my spirit guides are saying that a lot of you go through these negative triggering thoughts. Sometimes, every now and then throughout the day, you have to catch yourself in those moments when you start to get mentally triggered. The self-sabotaging thoughts like, nobody wants me, nobody loves me, am I ever going to be loved, blah, blah, blah. Okay, first of all, if you guys are going through those types of like triggering energies, you know deep down inside, that's not the truth. You are totally lovable. You are worthy of a healthy partnership. If something, you know, didn't exactly work out the way that you wanted it, don't think of the universe taking this person out of your life. The universe was taking you out of the equation because there's a higher purpose. There's a better connection. You know what I mean? And some of you, you know, that don't want that past person, even though that past person's energy, more than likely, they're going to come back around the bend again. But you might be viewing the situation entirely different. Okay? It's like a new form found of mental strength. And for some of you, you may not exactly feel, expect this, that you may not exactly feel the same way about that past person once this new person also comes into the mix. And you may be thinking, well, Mel, what about, you know, the past coming back? Well, yeah, there will be a choice. 
there will be a choice. It could definitely be a choice between a past person and I'm feeling like this is a new energy because there's like a form. What I'm picking up is like a form of excitement. And to me, this is like a sense of emotional, even though it's not a cup card, but the sun card's the most positive card in all of the tarot deck. It's a sense of emotional security that I'm picking up on where you're going to feel like you don't have to question if you allow somebody new to walk into your life, you're, it's like you're not going to be questioning it. Your guard may not be up as high as maybe opposed to a past person. So be consciously aware of that. If you happen to go through that wave of emotional and mental thought process from somebody from the past, because here's the thing, we're all energetically connected. And when you have had a situation with a person, okay, sometimes that past person could end up feeling you move on energetically. And a lot of times when they start to feel that that person is moving on energetically, there's, it's kind of like a ripple effect where that person's going to pick up on something and and sometimes that past person can also pick up on energy. Maybe when somebody new is going to enter into your, into your life, they feel like something's off or something's up, or they feel like they need to reach out to you, but they don't know why this past person may not know why they feel like they need to reach out to you, but they know that they just got to do it. So be prepared for anything, but it is very much important to stay in observation Stay in observation about your energy levels right now. Stay in observation of your emotional stance and your mental stance because that is another way that spirit is working with you on your intuitive level to guide you to make the best decision for yourself, okay, so that you're not stuck, Scorpio, in like that seven of cups energy where it's just everything is bombarding you or you feel overwhelmed, you feel stressed out, you feel the anxiety, whatever it is. There's an energy here that is showing me something is definitely turning around for the better. So right now you could be so focused in on work, you're focused in on your success and it's like, boom, that's when something new and something fresh is headed in your direction. So be prepared. Like I say, keep a notebook with you, you know, especially if you've been questioning your intuition or you're uncertain about something, look for signs, look for syn synchronicities. If there's a song, a name, a number sequence, if you're capturing a vision or something is going on over and over and over in your mind, write it down. That energy has to go somewhere. Nothing more powerful than a pad of paper and a pen or a pencil. Keep it with you at all times. Okay. And write the notes down. You don't need to meditate on it right then, right there. Just write it down and get the energy out on paper. And, you know, maybe before you go to bed, evaluate these ideas or thoughts or frequencies, anything that has hit you up emotionally or mentally throughout the day. Maybe you go through these triggering thoughts about your romantic life, the self-sabotaging thoughts. How many times does it hit you up during the day? Write it down. How many minutes did you stay in this slump of energy if it were to hit you. You know what I mean? Did you ruminate over past thoughts about a past person who did you over, backstab, betrayed you? How much are you giving energy to that negative thought? Was it five minutes? Was it a half hour? Was it two hours? Was it the entire day? How many times did you negatively talk about a past situation to a coworker, right? Because remember, if you're, if you're really trying to 
move on from somebody. This is for some of you. If you're really trying to move on from somebody from your past, it's best not to talk about that energy. I get it. Sometimes we need to vent and we need to get things out, but that pad of paper and that pencil or pen will actually become more of your best friend than bitching and complaining to a coworker or to a family member who really doesn't understand or get a true soulmate journey or a true twin flame connection. Okay, so be very conscientious about who you talk to about your romantic life. And if you feel like there's still nobody to turn to, as much as I try to give you guys as much motivation, inspiration, encouragement, support, but if you feel like you need to go talk to a certified professional, then do so to get an event out because they are not, you know, that professional's not going to they're going to ask you more questions to tap into your psyche, your friends or family members. And when you're, you want the romantic life, but if you're talking negatively with these friends, family members, coworkers, your boss, whatever, think about and examine, are they actually in romantic connections that are healthy? Do they bitch and complain about their boyfriends, girlfriends, Okay, those are not the people you want to be talking to. When you vent to a family member, are they in a partnership? How do they view relationships? Are they in something toxic? Are they in a really bad, abusive relationship? Or are they in a mediocre relationship? Or, you know, do they just have nothing good to say about partnerships? Those are not the people you need to talk to. Because what I'm seeing here is that a level or a surge of new energy or new confidence is trying to override you right now, you know, to put you basically the, to me, this is like the path of least resistance. Work on your energy levels right now. Cause I know what it feels like. Um, when, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. Um, when I just don't, you know, I'm just not feeling it. You know what I mean? I'm just not feeling it for the day. It's best to go into hermit mode and rest and rejuvenate and then get back up on the choo-choo train and move forward. Get your energy levels up. So some of you guys could be burying yourself in work to forget about your romantic life or somebody's trying to forget you, but it just may not be working for them right now. Somebody is thinking about somebody or you're just flat out thinking about your romantic life, which is important. You know, it's not everything, but it is important. It's time for me to heal now. See, so a lot of you are trying to heal. The sun card in tarot what could bring in healing. Yes, it can. It can bring in that message of clarity, spiritual insight, a spiritual awakening. You may end up going through a spiritual awakening, possibly on March 19th, March 9th or March 19th. You could also be dealing with a Virgo born on 9-19. There's a healing energy going on. So what this tells me is that your trusted ancestors, your spirit guides, and provided that you're asking them on a daily basis, you know, you don't have to beg the universe. You don't have to beg your guardian angels or your trusted ancestors. They know, they know your motives. They know the type of person that you are. They know the kind of relationship that you're looking for. Okay, but they're allowing a healing phase also here to happen so that this next new relationship is going to be the one that is going to be that rocket ship. It's, it's going to go off into the universe, you know what I mean? And again, it's like a, a wave of energy, a blast or a burst of energy in your romantic life that is going to make you 
eventually feel good. Let's go into the Romance Angels deck. Heart to heart conversations. All right, Toto, thank you. Could you please, hey, 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 hey. OMG, really Toto? She's, what are you doing? Oh my God, hang on a second. Heart to heart conversation. There's gonna be a heart to heart conversation. Hey, what are you, no, 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 no. You're disrupting the reading. Go get your chew toy. Sorry, you guys. No, and she's looking at me like, what did I do? Well, hello. <laughs> Don't scratch the carpet. <sighs> heart to heart conversations, you guys, right there. <laughs> it's true. Somebody wants to honestly discuss their feelings. I feel like now somebody's coming in to either pour their heart out. Again, this could be somebody from the past, somebody that you have an interest in, or a new person that is heavily intrigued by you, Scorpio, that sees the ultimate best in you. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. You're going to go from, if marriage is on your bucket list or long-term commitment, you're going to be going from single to partnership. Single, partnership. Single, partnership. <laughs> so, the right person, somebody who is going to honor and respect you. This is beautiful, you guys. Absolutely beautiful. Bottom of the deck, very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Forgiving and learning and healing the past, Scorpio. Somebody is intrigued by you. Bottom of the deck, Empress. Emperor, Empress energy could be dealing with a Pisces or an Aries born in the month of March. Could also be dealing with a Taurus or a Libra more specifically, but could be any Zodiac sign. A revitalization in your romantic life going from single to partnership. And it's looking good. And... Watch your thoughts. Write all of those, those thoughts, the ideas, the things that I discussed. Got to get your mind right. Perfection. Perfect your thoughts. Work on it every day. Okay. And a positive commanding statement is I am single and I am going to be married. I am currently single, but I am now moving into a partnership. My soulmate has already arrived. My husband has already arrived. My wife has already arrived. Place your positive affirmations and statements. Have a commanding tone in your voice. Feel that energy and solidify it. The power of your spoken word. The tone of your voice also will activate your mindset that is confirmed within your mind. And your voice will also confirm the emotions in your heart space. You don't want to say, yeah, my, my, my boyfriend's here. Yeah, now we're, we're leveling up. Yeah, no, you don't. That's poo-poo. You know what I mean? That's just poo-poo type of energy. Command, command it and say, I am now in a healthy, romantic, loving, committed partnership with the one that I love. Okay? 
And that person loves me, respects me, admires me, will do anything for me. And they're doing it right here, right now. And so <clears throat> it's time to take control of your emotions and your mental heart space. Cause you've got marriage, you've got partnership, singlehood into partnership. Somebody wants to have a heart to heart conversation. This could end up being the proposal, the proposal right here that somebody may say to you, like, look, I, I see the future. I see the future together. Okay. So my awesome and amazing Scorpios, if you'd like to book a personal reading with me and do it through the power of the numbers, you can hit me up at blue scorpion gifts at gmail.com. And my amazing assistant, Victoria will book you for that personal reading. But until next time, you guys take care.